Okay, class, we're back. Uh, so today we're going to take some tests. And I'd like for you guys to, here's the first one. It's uh, staring you, oops, I had this up. I was uh, working on stuff before. We don't want that up. Um, here I have a program. You have to determine what the output is. Don't copy the program, but have a piece of paper with a pencil and write down what the variables are and how they change. And um, usually the way I do that is I, for example, will have, uh, like with my paint, I will have um, like a variable, let's say if my variable is, you know, x and it's like changing and my y is changing, I will write down the values as it changes when I go through the code line by line. That's what I mean by having uh, a pencil and paper. So, pause the video now, take a look at that, without copying and running the program, see if you can figure out what the output is. Okay, so let's go over the solution here. Line 8, age is 4, b is 2. Line 10, we print and we call foo b. So we're going to pass b, but what is b? It's a 2. So we're passing 2 to the function foo. Now this b becomes a 2. Age is 2. Age is equal to 2 plus 1, which is 3. Age is now 3. And then 3 plus 2, which is what b is, is equal to 5. So now when we run this, we should get 5. Let's try it. Yes, the answer was 5. Excellent. OK. OK, let's take a look at the next question now. Uh, remember, if any of these questions happen to if the program happens to crash, then the answer would be, you know, error or something or crash. But um, see if you can determine whether the program will work properly and also if it does, what the answer is. Okay, so it is possible that some of these programs may crash. Here's the second one. There it is. Once again, go through it on paper because this is, this is what you're going to be doing on the test. And don't type it in, but determine what the output is. Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, we're back and let's see what the solution is here. So the solution to this one was six, right there. Let's take a look at how this works. So age is four, B is two, and now we call foo B. So we're sending the integer 2. Now age is 2. But we quickly override it where we say age is 3. Now 3 plus 1 is 4. And then 4 plus b. Is there a local b? No. So then it's going to go and find the b from the main scope or from the global scope, which is a 2. And therefore, 4 plus 2 will print 6. Now we come back and we say b equals 9 at this point. But remember, line 11 won't happen until line 10 is finished. So the b here is this one, not the 9. Okay, So that's how we got 
6 for that one. Okay, we're back, and this is now our third uh, quiz question. So in this one, go ahead and look at it again and see if you can figure out what the output is. And use pencil and paper only. Pause the video now. Okay, and we're back. So let's give this one a shot. Let's see what the answer is. Here we go. Ready? The answer is 5. Now, how could it be 5? Let's take a look and see if we can figure this out. Here we go. Line 6. Age is 4. B is 2. Then we call foo and we send B, which is a 2. Now age becomes 2. Now, this is 2 plus 1, which is 3. Now, age is 3. Therefore, this is 3 plus b. Question, is there a b equals in the function? No, therefore, there's no local b. Therefore, Python goes searching for b in the global scope. And there it is, line 7. So it's 3 plus 2 which is 5. And so the answer was 5. All right, we're back. And here is question number 4. So there it is. There's number 4. See if you can figure out what this program does. Pause the video and give it a shot all right and we're back so let's run this program hopefully you figured out this one was a bit of a trick question haha -ha. this program crashes so there's an error in it what's the error it says local variable age referenced before assignment on that line. Referenced before assignment. Let's take a look. Why does this line cause the program to crash? Well, let's start here. Age equals 4, b equals 2. Let's call foo. No arguments are passed. So we come up here. Now, we, what is the value of age? Well, Ask yourself this question. Is there a local variable called age? The way you determine that is if you have a line inside the function somewhere that says age equals. Now it might be tricky because actually that's the line we're on. But in fact, we do have a line that says age equals. It's right there. It's line number two. That means that the age variable is a local variable. Now the problem is, because it's local, it can't go and get the global age, which is age equals 4, because there is a local one. So now it says, but I can't access the local one yet because it's not created. So this is a problem of trying needing access to a variable before it is created and that the error for that is variable referenced before assignment okay so it's almost it's kind of like you know um, starting up a terminal uh, and just typing something like x equals x plus 1 and it's not going to work because it doesn't know what x is. So it can't, it can't assign the new x because it doesn't know what the previous one was. So um, that's not going to work. And that's why this program crashed. OK? Great. OK, great. We're back. So here is question number five. 
have a look at it, figure out what the output is without typing it out, just using pencil and paper. Pause the video now and give it a shot. Okay, we're back. Let's see what the solution is to this one. Ready? Here goes. And the answer is 5 again. Right there. Let's see how this one works. Okay, so age is 4, B is 2. Now we call foo with no arguments passed. But we have to be careful because we're adding something to what we get, what value we get returned. So first let's figure out what the function call returns. Let's go up to foo, no arguments passed. Age equals B. Do we have a line that says B equals in the function? No, we do not. So therefore, since there is no local variable B, we now go looking for a global one, and there it is. B equals 2. So now age equals 2. So now 2 plus 1 is 3. Age is 3. We now return 3. This now becomes 3. And we add B to it, which is 2. And 3 plus 2 is 5. And so we print out 5, and that's what we got. Okay? All right, let's try another. Okay, we're back. Here is the next question, number six. Notice this has two functions, foo and boo. And once again, no typing, just pencil and paper. See if you can figure out what the output of this program is. You're going to have to do this on your tests, so this is good practice. Pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, uh, let's see what the answer to this problem is. Let's run it. And the answer is 7. If you got that, well done. 7. Let's see how we get 7. So, um, let first, I'm going to actually do this one in two different ways. I'm going to go through it manually the way I have been, and then I'm going to show you how to do it. If, you, if you're not able to do what I'm doing, I'll show you how you, you can ha get help online. So let's go through it first. Line 10, age is 4, then C is 2, then B is 5. Now we call the function boo. No arguments passed. Nothing accepted. Age equals C plus 1. Is there a local variable C in here? No, there isn't. So therefore, is there a C that is global? Yes, there is, right there. OK? And now, so that's a 2. So this becomes a 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Age is now 3. Now we call foo with 3. So therefore, this B is now 3. C, a local C now is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. Now age is 4. Return 4. Now this becomes 4. And when you add 3 to it, it becomes 7. So we return 7. And that's what this becomes. And now we print the 7. And that's how the answer is. Uh, is discovered. Now, obviously I understand how the code is working and I can explain it this way, but if, if you're at home and, you're, and, you, and you don't have someone to explain it to you for different programs, you can you go to this website called pythontutor.com and you can just copy paste or type the code into the visualize your code and then you just simply go next and each time you click next, over here, you'll see that it's actually running the program line by line and creating my variables and their values. And then it's calling boo, and then it goes up to boo. And inside boo, now you have age is 3, right? Next line, 
Now it calls foo and it passes b as a 3. And now inside foo, c is 1. And then we add them together. Age is 4. And then we return that 4. And it says right there, return value. And then now you come back down to here and now you, you add that, right? Now boo's return value is 7. And finally, the output is 7. So it basically did what I did. And so, you know, you can get help like this from pythontutor.com. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, all right, great. So let's try the next one now. All right, now, don't freak out. Uh, this is a long looking program. However, I only want, there's, and in fact, there's going to be a lot of output in this program. Notice I have a print line here, I have a print line here, I have a print line here and here. But I only want the answer, the output of the last line. So what is the output of the last line? Now that last line of output is obviously going to be here. However, you could go through this and it might take you a while to figure out, but you'll get the answer. However, the other thing you could do is look at how these if statements work and try and deduce the answer without going through it step by step. Pause the video now and give it a shot. All right, we're back. Let's find out what the answer to this is. Uh, let me just first of all run the program to show you what the answer is. And you can see the last thing that is printed is a 1. Now, there's a lot of other things that are printed beforehand, but this last line here before the 1 is also kind of important because it says uh, there's a 10 here. So let's go back and let's take a look at these two codes. And I'm going to try and explain this instead of going through it line by line, which is going to take quite a while. I'm going to try and explain this through a deduction logic. So first of all, which fun function is being called? It's boo. That means when control comes back to line 22, when something is returned, it's going to be boo that returns it. Okay. However, inside boo, we're passing an argument, and that was age, and originally it's 4. So C, so C is going to be 4. We're going to add 1 to the argument that we received, and then we're going to check to see if it is less than 10. And if it is less than, that means we're going to call a different function with the value of age, which has just been incremented. So the age is now what we got, our input argument plus one, and that's what we're sending to foo. Well, foo takes this number, b, and now assigns it to b, increments it just the same as this one did. So it's incrementing what it's accepting. And then it's doing the same test. And then it's saying if that is less than 10, then it's calling boo, which so in other words, Boo is calling foo, and then foo is calling boo. So they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until age is not less than 10. And if age is not less than 10, then you see it returns 1. And then obviously when we're in boo, if age is not less than 10, instead of calling foo again, we simply return 1. And there's nothing else to do. Obviously, this is going to go back and forth either in an infinite loop, in which case it's never going to finish, but it is because we're always incrementing the value we're sending back and forth. And so eventually, this is going to fail, and the else is going to be executed, and therefore, this is going to print a 1. And again, if I run this, that's what the output looks like. 
So four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, and finally ten. Okay. So um, that's the end of the program. Um, and you could even go through Python Tutor and 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 kind of see how the control of this is bouncing back and forth between the two functions. But uh, let's go on to the next one now. Okay, and we're back. So here is question number eight. See if you can figure out what the output to this one is. Pause the video and give it a shot. Okay. And let's see what the answer to this one is. Here we go. The answer is three. Let's see how that works. Now, if you notice in this one, there's the keyword global here on line two. So let's start and let's see how this impacts it. X equals two, J equals X. So at this point, watch what I'm going to do. Let me bring up my uh, paint program and if I could maybe move it over to like here and let's uh, let's clean it out let's kind of like make some space here discard so here's how I would do it like when you have when I say keep using a piece of paper this is what I mean by that so I would say all right X is 2 uh, j is equal to x, so j is 2, then x is 3, then I'm going to call foo, and I'm going to pass it j. So j is 2, so I'm calling foo, and I'm sending, uh, so now I have foo, and inside foo, I have an x, and that is getting the j value, so that is now a 2 okay and then I'm saying global J so saying global J means that now the J I'm going to be using is this J here okay in other words this is not a local J if it was it would just exist here and only inside the function but because I'm using the global statement on line 2 at the beginning of the function and that's where you that's where you uh, declare your global uh, variables is at right after the declaration of the function after the def statement so now if x is 2 so 2 plus 1 is 3 therefore now this because this is a globe it's using the global J I can't go like this and say this J no it's using the global one so I'm using this one so this one now turns into a 3 okay and then after I call the function I print out J which is 3 obviously that print statement is printing out the global J but there is no local j in foo because, because of state line number two. Okay? Hope that makes sense. And uh, that was the answer. The answer was the three. Okay, let's, uh, let's try another one. Okay, so here is... The next question, number nine. Always something new in each one. So give, a, give it a shot. Uh, there's going to be a space between these two. So there's, this is actually going to produce some output here. And then this is going to produce another output here. And they're going to have a, the comma will just put a space in between the two answers. OK? Give it a shot. Pause the video now. Okay, let's let's give this. Let's find out what the 
output of this one is. Here we go. 5 and a 3. Let's see how the answer could be 5 and 3. So um, here on we're going print foo 2 comma 3. So we're sending 2 and 3. So x becomes 2. Okay, so uh, we've got x taking, like I said, x takes the value of 2 here, and y, no, sorry, not that 2, <laughs> this 2. So x takes the value of 2, and now there is no y argument passed, so y is able to take the default argument of 1, so that becomes 2 plus 1, and it returns 3. So, in essence, the final result is a 5 and then a 3. And when we run it, obviously, uh, that's what we're getting. We're getting the 5 and the 3. But I just want to make another, I want to add a side note here. And that is that we, this first line, the reason why it's commented, it out, commented out, is that I wanted to reiterate that that line would be illegal if we try to get away with it because you can't have a non-default argument coming after a default argument, right? This is okay. Line two is fine. That's fine. But line number one, not allowed, okay? And I've put, the, put a comment here just to emphasize that. So be aware of that. Um, all right, so let's now take a look at the next program. So this, I think we're on number 10 now. Okay, so pause the video and give this one a shot and see if you can figure out what the answer is. Okay. So hope you paused it and let's run it now and see what the answer is. The answer is 2. Let's find out if we can figure out why the answer is 2. Okay. So it might help if we maybe perhaps have our, uh, let's kind of move some of this stuff out of the way here. Okay. Here we go. Um, we've got x is, our global x is 2, j is the same as 2, it's an j equals x, and then we say x equals 3, and then we call foo, and inside foo, we pass j, which is a 2, to x. So now we have an x inside here, which also has a value of 2. And then on line number 2, we go x plus 1. And so there's a local j now that has a value of 3. And then the function's over. And now we go back to line number 8, right here. And finally, we print j. And notice which j are we printing. We're printing this j. And so the output is the 2. OK? So that's how that works. Um, and once again, we run that. We get 2. Great. So. Let's go to the next one. That was 10, here's 11. So, take a look at that um, function and determine, pause the video now and try and figure out what the solution or what the output is. Pause the video now.
Okay, and we're back. So let's run this program. And we'll run it. And the output is 537. Let's see if we can figure out why that is. Okay, so first one, we're calling foo with no arguments. That means both default arguments will kick in. So 2 plus 3 is 5. So the first one is 5. Okay, so I kind of move this over again. The first call to foo is 2 plus 3. That's a 5. The next call is foo 1, 2. Now in this case, the default arguments for both of them are not required because we're passing two arguments and, they, and you only, the, the default arguments only kick in when nothing is pr uh, provided. So in this case, uh, 1 plus 2 becomes 3. And then the last call to foo is only with one argument. And in this case, the one argument that takes it is the x. So now, x is 4 and y is 3. Perhaps I should have done uh, subtraction because, that, because in addition, the order doesn't matter. So um, maybe for next time, I'm, it'd probably be better. But in any case, this is how it's working. You go 4 plus 3, not 3 plus 4, although the answer is the same. In any case, it's 7. So, there's the answer to that one. Okay, let's try uh, the last one here. I think we're on number 12, and I think this is my last one here. Let's give it a shot. Ah, <laughs> yeah. See, I knew there was a reason why I had number 12. So, this is really important because now it's not commutative. So pause the video now and give this one a shot. Okay, we're back. Uh, so let's begin. Let's go through this. So let's kind of move this over a little bit again. And here we go. So for foo, where now this is actually using not only is it using default arguments it's also using keyword arguments so in this case um, when we call it the y is equal to 4 you can do this when you have you can do this because both arguments here are have default arguments so in other words x is going to be so if I say x and y inside the function, x is going to be 2, y is going to be 4, because we're specifying that in the function call. And then we're going x minus y. So when we do that, we're going to get, oh, wait, we didn't really run this one, did we? Hold on, let's run it. OK, negative 2, 0, 5, 5. So yeah, we can write the answers down here. Negative 2, 0, 5, 5. Those are the answers which we should get. So we got this one. That was right. Uh, now let's call foo 3. Notice this is not a keyword argument. We're just passing 1. Up. So now the x becomes the 3, right? And the y is all, the default value is a 3. So, and then when we subtract them, we get 0. And that's correct. OK? Next one, uh, foo y equals 1 and x equals 6. Although um, this one looks kind of weird, because why would you ever want to do this? I, I don't really know. I mean, this is looks stupid from a programming perspective. But just in terms of understanding the language, let's go ahead and do it. 
um, keyword arguments take precedence over order so that's a 6 and the y would be a 1 and 6 minus 1 is 5 and that's correct and finally for the last one if we move that over a little bit more uh, 6 comma 1 and so this one is just a straight up both arguments are supplied no keyword arguments here and so it's just simply x is 6 and y is 1 you subtract them you get 5 and that's correct okay so uh, we're done these practice tests I I hope they helped you understand how um, local variables and global variables and how Python functions work uh, so once again I really cross my fingers hope that you not only just watched this video but also paused it and didn't just simply let the video play through without trying the out to get the output yourself because uh, as I've said before you can't learn how to ride a bicycle by watching others you have to get on there and try yourself alright well thanks for watching this video we'll see you next time